Hey everybody, welcome to Sid's Little Corner of the Internet. We've got a Star Wars The Black Series review coming your way. This time around, this is a little bit of a special edition. We're going to be taking a look at the Star Wars Black Series Scout Trooper Holiday Edition. So this was released for the Christmas or the holiday season of 2022. So let's go ahead and take a look at that packaging. And we'll start right up here at the top. You've got Star Wars Black Series. And you can see that it is all decorated nicely. Like a Christmas present, if you will. And then you've got your... Uh, display area back there and if you look closely you can see back there you have snowflakes on that back part of the packaging uh, down here you have scout trooper holiday edition there is a warning on there so you know be aware it's a scout trooper uh, you have scout trooper holiday edition there and you have that back here you have a little bit of information if you care to read it and down here you have all your warnings and you do have your sad baby the baby is sad because well at the time of this recording christmas is over so it's kind of a post Christmas edition and there you have that side. You've got a little bow on it. It's all pretty. There's your top. There's some additional information on the bottom if you care to read it. So that is it for the packaging. Let's go ahead and see what came inside that box. Behold, laid out here before you is everything that came inside that box. And we will start as we always do, at least with Hasbro products, with the little sheet of warnings, you know, just in case you didn't get enough of the warnings on the outside of the box. And then over here, you have his weapon. Now, this thing's really cool. This is, uh, I'm calling it the Noisy Cricket, but this is that standard issue Scout Trooper tiny weapon. But with that coloring on there, it looks an awful lot like a Nerf gun to me. So it totally makes sense that Imperial Troopers would have Nerf guns. Not that it would matter if they were loaded with real bullets anyway. It's not like they're going to hit you. But yeah, for a tiny gun, a pretty good molded in detail and a decent paint on there as well so yeah not not bad at all and then over here you get a little holiday bag it's like santa's uh, bag of goodies so let's take a look at the outside here first and uh, you've got some nice texturing back there kind of give it that realistic fabric look and then you got this strap right there everything looks pretty good I like what they've done and then over here on this side of course you got that red and white just like santa's bag again with that texturing on the outside Looks pretty good. And then what do we have inside? Let's take a look, shall we? So you just open these up right here. And one and a two. And oh, would you look at that? Oh, it's a little baby Grogu head. So it's implied that the rest of Grogu is in there. But the only thing that you can get access to is the head. He doesn't come out. You can move the head a little bit, a little bit of up and a little bit of down. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, let's not go morbid here. But... Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like this little holiday bag that they have for him here. I like it very much. And then, of course, you just got those two little holes right there. You just plug those in. And then you can cover him up and and then hit him like the Scout Troopers do in the Mandalorian. You know, so that's totally up to you if you want to do that. But, yeah, if I can do it on camera here. And, 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 and plug these in. Maybe if I give myself a better view. They are kind of tight. So they will hold well. If I can get them in there. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm struggling with this. Well, no, I take that back. I can totally believe I'm struggling with it. There. There. There we go. We got one in. So it's just a matter of getting them lined up. So yeah, this is pretty cool. I like it. All right, so that is it for everything that came inside the box, except for the scout trooper himself. So let's go ahead and bring him in for his details. We're not going to do a cut here. We're just going to keep right on rolling with this. So this dude is really cool. I like what they've done. So uh, we're going to get to that ugly Christmas sweater in a second, but let's go ahead and focus on that head. So you've got everything molded in red there, and then you've got the green, and then that mouthpiece is pretty detailed. Uh, this is just a repaint of the Black Series Scout Trooper, so if you already have that trooper, there are no surprises here other than just this uh, redeco. That's the back of the head. And then coming down, there it is. Look at, look, look, look at the ugly Christmas sweater. I love it. That is, <laughs> that is just great. It's got the little Grogu on there. Yeah, he looks, he looks so cool. I really like this. And you got little snowflakes there. Looks really good. Coming on down, and then you've got that crotch area, and then the little saddlebags right there. Nice texturing on those legs, and the coloring looks good. And then you've got these big green boots with the white stripes. Kind of look like Christmas socks or elf shoes. 
So just absolutely brilliant. You've got your little hol holster down here for your noisy cricket. So that's nice. And taking a look at those arms. You've got the green armor on those arms and then the green hands. Again, good texturing in there. You can see the inside of the arms. See those hands, what they've done there. Everything looks good. And coming around to the back. So again, a lot of molded red for this back area. And I would have liked to have seen them put a couple splashes of paint back here just to break all this up because it becomes very obvious that it's just one big red molded piece. So it would have been nice if they could have done something with the details here. And then coming down to his butt. It is what it is. And coming on down. Everything looks good. There's the bottom of the feet. So you've got some pegs and he does have some nice treads. So he's going to get some traction. So that is good. Now articulation, uh, as far as the articulation goes, it is typical black series. No major surprises here. So as far as the head goes, you've got down, you've got up, you have all the way around. Um, you can get a little bit of side to side, not much. It's going to be negligible there. And coming over here to the shoulders, because of that armor, you're not going to get a lot of motion here as far as bringing that arm up before it starts running into itself. So the arm's going to come up that far. You can go all the way around if you want to. You've got a little bit of wiggle in there, but I wouldn't really call it anything. And then you have bicep rotation. So you can take that around right there. You have double jointed elbows. So you need to give those a bend and then a bend, and then you can get a nice 90 degree out of that. So very well done. And then coming down here to the wrists, you can spin those wrists all the way around and then you have that little hinge right there where you can bring them up or that joint, not a hinge, bring them up that far, bring them down that far. All right, then your waist, if you want to call it that, or ab is all right here just below Grogu's face. So you can spin around that far either way. You can get a little bit of up, you can get a little bit of down, and then everything else is locked in place. As far as those legs go, again, you're going to just start running into things. So that's the biggest hurdle you're going to have. So you're going to get splits of about that far and then kicking forward before you really start scrunching things up. You're going to get about that far on a forward kick and you're going to get about that far on a backward kick. You could probably try to wiggle things and get a little further if you need to, but then it just gets weird. So you know, not a lot of articulation as far as that goes. Uh, you do have thigh rotation, so you can get out about that far. You can get in about that far. Coming down to the knees, these are double jointed as well, so you can give those a pull and get a 90 degree bend out of those. So nice deep knee bends. And then you do also have rotation here. So not only at the thigh, but right here at that lower leg, you can do something with those as well. Feet are typical black series. So you're gonna get down that far. You're going to get up that far you have ankle tilt where you can really hurt somebody and then you have the ability to rotate that foot around as well so if i can isolate it and show you so you get some rotation like that that's really just part of that ankle ankle tilt but if you want to call it rotation you can do that as well so there you go um biggest points uh as far as articulation really just come down to Everything running into everything right here uh, as far as the, the hips go. So limited movement there and then limited movement in those shoulders, just bringing those shoulders up. But everything else is pretty good. So uh, no major issues there. He's about as articulated as Black Series figures get. So regarding those accessories, there's really not a lot you can do here with this guy. I mean, the accessories that he comes with are pretty cool, but they're just simply not that dynamic, if you will. So you do have the noisy cricket and you do have his holster and you have his fists. I think you know where this is going. So you can take the noisy cricket and then you can just put it in his holster and it hangs out down there by his leg. Hold, does a pretty good job of holding it here. I mean, you, you definitely don't want to trust this uh, too much, but I mean, you can totally put him upside down and he's not going to drop it. So you do have that. And then both of the hands are formed with that, that uh, trigger, that firing motion, if you will. So it's a little bit of a struggle to get the noisy cricket in there. You just have to wiggle this in. Hey, would you look at that? He's finally holding his gun correctly. So let's go ahead and keep moving on here. And you can see uh, it's just held like that. Like I say, there's no magic to it. It was just a matter of uh, me getting my fingers out of the way to get his fingers in the way, if you will. So yeah, he holds it pretty well. I do think that this whole, and it's not just isolated to him, it's the original Scout Trooper as well. I do think that this whole arm bend 
when he's holding a gun, it just looks awkward. It looks kind of weird. I don't know what it is. It's just a little, it's just a little bit off. I just, I, I want to, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's better when he's like that, you know, but we need to do a full extension. It just looks, I don't know. There's something about it that and it doesn't do it for me. But hey, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's yours if you have it. So you, you do what you want to do. So yeah, that's how he holds the gun. I know it's kind of a surprise, but there it is. So let's go ahead and bring the little bag of goodies in. And, you know, there's no right way, no wrong way here. Do it the way you want to do it. I mean, if you just want to have it, you know, like this, you can have it like that. If you want to have him do it the, uh, like the, uh, the, the proper way to prevent a mugging, I guess was the right way to put it. Uh, you can lift that arm up a little bit and give yourself some room and then you can take this over the head and bring that over and then down like that and maybe a little bit to the back. Whoa, oh no, it's on his face. So you can do something like that if you want to and then have his arm down so that way it's really secure. That way if the Mandalorian comes and tries to take it, he's like, oh, taking the whole uh, trooper with him instead of uh, just ripping it right off his shoulder. So you can do that. You can angle it to the back a little bit, put it over that edge. That way it's completely out of his way. You know, and he's got it like that. Then he's like, hey, you, quiet. Bam, bam, bam. Yeah. You know, one of those things. If you want to, maybe I'm getting a little overboard there. Did I just commit Grogu abuse? Or if you want to bring it to the front, you can bring it to the front. It's totally up to you, but that's how it works. Uh, he puts the gun in his hand. He puts the bag on his shoulder. I know I'm as shocked as you are but that's how it works. And of course, uh, just put the gun in his holster when you're, when you're done, just practice uh, proper firearm safety there and make sure you follow all the uh, rules of the firearms. So with that, that pretty much covers this guy. So let's go ahead and get into some comparisons and uh, see how he looks compared to a few other uh, figures out there. For our first comparison, on the left, of course, is that Holiday Scout Trooper. And on the right is one of my few remaining original figures that I've had since I was a kid. This is my Imperial Snow Trooper, one of the troopers that was on the ice planet Hoth. Uh, yeah, uh, he's he's been uh, markered up a little bit. So I used to do this to my figures. Don't ask me why I was a kid. I have no excuses. But you can see that, uh, you know, the from a size standpoint, those original figures from 40-some years ago compared to the Black Series, just to give you an idea of uh, size difference there. Well, it wouldn't be one of my reviews if I didn't find a way to drag a Transformer into it, so I figured I would use Mr. Wheeljack from the War for Cybertron Kingdom line. It makes sense to me. Uh, he's got red, white, and green on him. Those are Christmas colors. That's the best excuse I have, but there you go. You can see the Black Series compared to the uh, Voyager class or Deluxe class from the War for Cybertron series. Our next comparison is a fellow Black Series figure. This is the Shore Trooper figure, but with that, uh, that gold colorization from either earlier in 2022 or late 2021. I just can't quite remember. And to wrap up our comparisons, I saved the most relevant for last. This, of course, is the Black Series Scout Trooper next to the Black Series Scout Trooper. So take your pick. These guys are exactly the same as far as molding goes. It's just a matter of uh, do you want that traditional look or do you want that ugly Christmas sweater? So, But everything else is the same on those guys except for the, uh, the paint or the coloring on these guys. But I, I think they look pretty good together. So there you go. Well, that's going to do it for comparisons. And... I'm not entirely sure what this pose is. I was trying to think of something cool to do for this last <laughs> little segment. I didn't really come up with anything. So uh, let's go with uh, Star Wars and Marvel are both Disney properties. So yeah, Wakanda forever. Let's go with that. Let's get into those final thoughts. So there you have the Star Wars Black Series Scout Trooper Holiday Edition with that little baby Grogu in that little Christmas bag. And overall, I think this is a really cool figure. I, I like the repaint. I like what they've done here. It's really festive, and I absolutely love that uh, ugly Christmas sweater that they put on this guy. So I, I think it's it's pretty well done. And if you like the Black Series, I think he's something that you're going to want to pick up. I just think uh, it's, a, it's too much fun to pass up. So with all that being said, just to talk about a few things real quick here, the overall aesthetics. Like I said, just really festive Christmas, holiday, winter colors, what, whatever you want to call them, the reds and the greens and everything just work really well. That Christmas sweater is really funny. 
and I like the little Nerf gun look to his noisy cricket to his little firearm there. So I think the overall looks, I, I think he hits all the right buttons here. Uh, moving on to the uh, articulation, eh, yeah, he he's okay. You know, he's he's limited by the fact that he runs into himself in the shoulders and in those hips, but you can still get him in some pretty nice poses. And I really think that for the most part, this is going to be one of those figures that's not going to necessarily be a dynamically posed figure. Uh, he's just going to be running away with the child and trying to avoid the Mandalorian. So take do with that what you will. Uh, moving on to the accessories. The accessories are pretty cool here. They're they're nothing earth shattering. The noisy cricket is what it is. I like the little holster down by his foot that you can use. I really like the little red bag with Grogu in it. Anytime you can throw a, a Grogu in something, that's going to be a bonus for you for sure. Uh, but yeah, he wouldn't be the same without these accessories. And uh, I think they they play really well onto the figure itself. Overall quality is good. I don't have any issues with the quality. I don't see any issues with paint or any type of sculpt work, anything like that. The joints are all tight. I, my biggest complaint, it's not even really quality related, is just that elbow bend. It's just, it's kind of funky. Just trying to find the right positioning for that. So, uh, but other than that, everything works the way it should. He came with everything he was supposed to, so quality is pretty good. Uh, finally, overall value. This one's going to be a little interesting because I don't know what the availability is going to look like on this figure. For me, I found this figure uh, at a local Target for 20 US dollars. Uh, he was on a bit of a sale, took an opportunity, and picked him up. And this was actually something that I picked up prior to Christmas of 2022. This recording is actually taking place a few days after Christmas 2022. Uh, just like everybody else, hey, the Christmas season comes, the that holidays get busy. Uh, so, Sometimes you just got to wait for stuff. So I don't know what the availability is going to look like on this guy. I don't know if you're going to have to find him online or if other retailers are going to carry this figure. But for me, I think the value was there for 20 US dollars. He was definitely worth picking up. I can't speak to what the aftermarket is going to look like on this guy. I don't think he's going to be worth much more than MSRP simply because it's a figure we've already seen just in a different paint scheme. So uh, take for that what you will. Uh, but I do think if you can find him and you can pay that $20, he's definitely worth picking up. So overall, I think he's a good figure. I think you're going to like him if you can find him. So with that, that's going to wrap up the review. Uh, hope you guys got some good information. Hope you got some entertainment out of it. And if you haven't already done so, be sure to hit that like button. Be sure to subscribe, leave comments if you feel like it. And if this video or this channel is anything that you think others may like, please feel free to share, spread the word. We love seeing the channel grow. So with that, that's going to wrap it up. Until we see you guys in the next review, take care.